Hi everyone, so today I want to talk to you about my journey of thinking about studying abroad in the US, um, both in my undergraduate years and currently um, during my graduate studies. And so just to give you a bit of background, I come from a traditional um, local school environment where I studied there in the same school most um, throughout from primary school till form five. After the HKC exam, I attended um, a school, that, an international school called Lipo Chun United World College of Hong Kong, where I studied IB program, International Baccalaureate program. And after that, I studied in the US um, at Cornell University and pursued a degree in industrial and labor relations. And after that, um, I worked for a few years. Um, so both started in investment banking in Hong Kong and afterwards moved to Tanzania, where I actually am right now, um, it, to, to work on development consulting. And so last September, I started my graduate school um, at Harvard Kennedy School of Government and Harvard Business School, where I'm doing a joint degree in the Master of Public Policy and MBA. And so I just wanted to tell you more about my journey first of how I, focusing first on I think more of my undergraduate years, how I started even thinking about um, studying abroad and what were my sparks um, to lead me to think that I wanted to study in the US. And so I would go back to um, form three when I first went on an exchange program um, to Deerfield Academy for three weeks. So that was really my first experience of, of being in like a liberal arts environment, being in a small group environment. And that was very different um, from the type of uh, teaching environment that I was used to in my local school. The depth of the analysis um, in a classroom, small classroom discussion, uh, and the degree of gray area that you could actually get into in a discussion instead of having more black and white answers really intrigued me and made me start thinking about actually being in this type of environment um, in higher education and university in the future and the potential of studying in the US or a similar type of environment in the future. And so that was a thought that I had in mind. And then I started thinking about what are some options that can potentially help me get there easier. And so I found out about this program called um, a school called United, a school, a network of schools called United World College. And there was one in Hong Kong called Lipo Chun United World College and where they also share value education through cultural understand, through sharing cultural understanding, which was always really important to me. I was always fascinated by different types of cultures. And so I was lucky to have been able to uh, continue my high school there. And I was also then pursuing uh, the International Baccalaureate program, which was relatively more internationally recognized than uh, a local school um, back then A-levels, um, Hong Kong A-levels um, by the international university. So I think that's also one thing to, to be thinking about. What are certain programs that are easier, um, that are more accepted in, in the international system, whether it's US or UK or Australia or Canada um, universities there. And so that was an, uh, the second spark um, that really helped me gear towards wanting to study abroad um, for higher education. So in, in this already multicultural environment, again, we were in relatively smaller classes and then around like, I think 20, 20 people around ballpark um, per class. And in every class, again, there were a lot of discussions. Um, I still remember going in and not being very used to this environment because in, in, in the years of schooling before that, in a local school, I was used to doing multiple choice questions, a lot of just um, black and white answers. Whereas in the IB program, it was much more about doing analysis. Even I was remember being surprised in chemistry where after an experiment, we were actually writing a paper. And to me, writing a paper for a science class was, was pretty surprising. Um, we were asked to analyze 
different reasons we think why an experiment worked and didn't work and instead of just simply doing multiple fill in the blanks or or even just um, just more black and white answer questions and so these were all the environments that it took time for me to adjust but it also made me realize this is what I want to pursue further and so then I started becoming sure that I wanted to have the opportunity to study abroad. I was mainly actually thinking about the US and I can just speak a bit more um, about the UK, but I actually didn't look much into, for example, Canada or Australia at that point. And the reason I chose the US then was because I was looking for more of a liberal arts education. There wasn't something very specific that I wanted to specialize in. And I was interested in a bit of um, economics, um, history, um, sociology. And so I found just the right mix of this degree, um, luckily, at Cornell University's Industrial and Labor Relations program. And so I think I think a general recommendation is that if you're interested in, if you're interested more in, in a, a broader um, education environment, liberal arts, where you can only decide your degree towards the end of your four years of education in the U.S., then I would recommend um, going to school in the U.S. So a lot of schools, for example, different bigger university, they might have like an arts and science um, a college where you can take many different classes in your first two years, three years, and then declare a major towards later. Um, of the four years that you are in um, at the school. And so, whereas in the UK, from what I understand, is that you would need to choose a degree um, right when you apply, which I think is relatively harder for uh, certain high school students um, when you're not sure what exactly you want to specialize in. And sometimes it takes time to explore. But uh, that being said, if you're very specific and know exactly the topic you're interested in, for example, law or politics, philosophy and economics, then the UK would also um, would be a great choice. So moving on from that, um, now thinking more about, so this is my journey uh, in thinking about uh, getting to study undergraduate degree in the US. So now fast forwarding a few years from after I graduated from Cornell University to now pursuing an MBA MPP degree at Harvard Business School and Harvard Kennedy School, I can quickly talk about how I decided to come onto this journey into pursuing graduate education again. So after my undergraduate years, I first moved back to Hong Kong and worked in investment banking and a bit of impact investing for around two years. And so with that more finance background, I then went and moved to Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, where I'm situated right now, uh, and worked in development consulting for almost three years. And so it was a mix of interest between um, bringing private investments into developing countries to boost their development um, that was something that I figured over time that is something that I want to focus on. And so understanding there's both the more business side of things and also more policy side of things, I found a degree um, at Harvard that could actually be joining these two um, together. And so that's the joint degree that I'm, I'm pursuing. And I thought it would be fascinating to be able to further my critical management skills on the business side, but also... Um, need the policy knowledge um, that I feel that sometimes while I encounter that at work here there was no actual foundation that I really built that upon and so I decided to hop onto this journey um, of the next three years of graduate school. Even though I just started um, graduate school a few months ago um, I think one important advice that I would give is that for certain degrees, especially at least for the ones that I'm pursuing now, MBA and MPP, it is really helpful for one to have worked for a bit, at least a few years beforehand, and then go into graduate schools. And the reason I say that is because I think 
in the few years that you actually work in a field, you have a better idea of what direction you actually want to take for your future career or what are certain things that you want to specialize in. For example, for me right now, I'm really interested in economic development um, focus between China, Africa, um, and the US. And so having these in mind and then going into graduate school really helps you narrow down um, on, onto certain things that you want to really specialize in and be an expert about. And with that being said, that's of course, I think graduate school is also a great time for one to explore the different areas and different um, different topics that you previously haven't had a chance to, but at the same time, it's also helpful to know exactly um, what are the things that I want to get out um, of graduate school. So in my next video, I'll talk more about how I actually prepped um, to get to both the undergraduate college um, and the graduate school that I'm at right now.